Hello, my name is Catherine of Ragtag Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you the basics of distressing and what you need to include in your very own distressing kit. Okay, so, let's see, one of the first things that you need for your distressing kit would be a box. Um, any sort of place where you can keep all of your tools and everything else that you're going to need. Um, art bins are great. I got this for free, um, and I just ripped out all of the drawers because they were all cockeyed and didn't close properly. Um, yeah, garage sales, you can find them pretty cheap. Um, usually they're very expensive. Another thing you can do is um, you can get some, like, one of the uh, tool chests or something like that. Um, anything that you can find that you can just keep it in. Um, a couple things about distressing, other than having a box, is um, any sort of tool that is destructive in any uh, any way, shape, or form. Works fantastic. Um, grill, brushes, cleaners. With this little nice part, which I'll show you about later. These are awesome. Um, you can also use hammers because you can use this end to rip through the cloth. Knives are okay. Um, it depends on the kind of cut you want. Different tools do different things. It all depends upon what, how you're distressing your uh, project. Like, for instance, I made a zombie lab coat, which is friggin' awesome. Um, this is one of the distressing projects I did in the costume design class with Tara. So you see, it's got the big, huge rip and everything. Um, if you want it to look like Basically, you have to think about how you want it to look like if, if you want to look like you jumped out of a car at 60 miles an hour and got totally shredded, or if you want to look like you got mauled by a zombie. I mean, it's two different things. Um, anything that has, any tool that has a sharp edge will create a cleaner tear through the fabric when you um, use it. Uh, Brushes will kind of make the fabric look nappy when you brush it. Um, also, it depends on the type of fabric you're using. If you're using cotton or linen, it's... Well, linen's a little bit more delicate, but with any sort of cotton, canvas, anything, jeans, stuff like that, um, you, can, you can definitely be more rough with it. If you use this on taffeta, yeah, it's going to shred right through it really easy if you wanted to be a zombie prom queen. Um, it all depends on the fabric and how you want your costume to look. So for the zombie coat, I use something similar to this to rip and hack through the shoulder to make it look like I was mauled by something, and then I use the brush to kind of make it look nappy. Um, let's see what else can I use in your toolbox. Oh, big important thing, shoe polish! Um, you can get the Kiwi brand, you can buy it at Walmart. Target, Longs, Drugs, just about anywhere that sells shoes carries shoe polish and usually carries Kiwi. Kiwi's pretty good. But um, the shoe polish is a great way to make something look like it's, you've been walking through blood or feces or you've been dragged in the dirt or something like that without actually using dirt. Um, yeah. So shoe polish works great. I'll show you how to use that in a minute. Um, also... Fabric paint, awesome. If you want to make it look like you've got blood all over you, just grab some fabric paint, red fabric paint, smush it in your hands and have at it. Um, this is another one of those things where you kind of have to get messy, so um, yeah, if, if you're a neat freak or a clean freak, it you just got to get messy. You just got to get messy. It's a lot, of, a lot of fun when you get messy. Um, what else? Oh, we were talking the last tutorial, we had the rub and buff. You can always use rub and buff, although it's more expensive because it's such a smaller tube. Um, another thing that is a must when you're working with any sort of tool is a glove. So if you're right-handed and you tend to hack away at something, make sure you have a left-handed glove because you don't want to be hacking away and then go, ah! You have blood gushing out and then you have to rush to the emergency room and get stitches and or, you know, get whatever bone mended that you've broken. 
Um, so yes, a glove is a must. And of course, conversely, if you're left-handed, use a right-handed glove. Because you don't also want to, like, rip off the skin off of your hand. Um, but yeah, any sort of, like, barbecue grill cleaner or any sort of farm tool, spade, pick, shovel, axe, if you feel the need. Um, mostly any tool would work. Um, just try different things. You can pick up stuff really cheap at hardware stores and things like that and just give it a try. Sandpaper, if it's the really coarse stuff, works nicely too. Um, oh, another thing that you may want is spray bottles. So if you have the fabric paint, like this kind, this is Jacquard airbrush color. Um, you can use any airbrush fabric paint. Usually you can do like a 50-50 mix, so 50% um, airbrush paint and then 50% water and it can be used in little spray bottles so that makes life easy and you can also use dye. Dye is a big one that you need um, if you want a lot of blood kind of thing you can if you do a lot of dye baths you can mix all your extra dye together and it turns into this interesting brown-ish color that looks exactly like you were walking through blood um, and it dried and got all crusty and everything, which is it's really nice. It, it leaves nice stains. You can also use it to make it look like, you know, you've been puking all over yourself or whatnot. Um, makes great dirt stains, mud stains, things like that. So that's another thing. So dye is very, very good. Um, you can spray it on. It makes great splatters when you use the, um, the spray bottle. Uh, okay, so I'm going to show you some of the little techniques for using um, the tools and stuff. So, my zombie jacket, I wanted to make a zombie shirt and to go underneath of it. So I'm going to show you how I rip the shoulder. Um, first of all, always be safe. Um, so this part's really cool. This is, um, I got this for like three or four bucks at Walmart course Walmart cheap things um, it's got this really nifty little piece at the end which is great for ripping through things so that way you don't have to use a knife because knives create too clean of a cut sometimes um, unless you want to look like you got stabbed then they're perfect um, plus you, it also comes with this nice part which is bristly and, and works great at making it nappy so you want to hold your fabric pretty steady and then just Start ripping through. You can get it to do its thing. Ah, there we go. Sometimes it takes a little bit too because you get the fabric's thicker or whatnot. So, and if you have a friend who's not afraid that you're going to stab them somehow, um, you can always. Um, ask them to hold it and stand far enough away so you can go like that. Um, let's see. Also, this is a great stress reliever. Um, it's, yeah, it's great because you can just beat the crap out of something and you don't get in trouble for it. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, as you see, this kind of creates some interesting characters. It's pretty clean because of that. Um, so if you want to make it look more molds, you can just go like this. And what these do is they kind of nap the fabric. Or tears out what you've already got and makes it look stringy and whatnot, depending on your fabric. This is kind of a thin fabric, so it's a little bit more difficult to get it look nappy. And let's say you want to make it look like